Revolution is an effort to transform the political institutions and the justification for political authority in any society, accompanied by formal or informal mass mobilization and non-institutionalized actions that undermine authorities. When the great scholar, philosopher and author Jack Goldstone wrote the foregoing lines, little did he know that an offspring of the royal family of the renowned scholar and emir of Kano, northwest Nigeria, would walk the talk. That man is Malam Sanusi Lamido Sanusi, son of a former permanent secretary in the Federal Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Elijah Aminu Sanusi, and grandson of one of the most distinguished scholars and 11th emir of Kano, in the pre-independence era, Alaji Sir Muhammadu Sanusi. Malam Sanusi Lamido Sanusi hails from a royal and distinguished family background, a noble heritage of accomplished scholars with high premium on dignity, power and prestige. Born in Kano on July 31, 1961, Sanusi Lamido Sanusi has brought his excellent educational achievement and royal background into public service. This is clearly evident in the measures he has introduced as governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, to sanitize Nigeria's Apex Bank. As soon as he was appointed CBN governor in June 2009, in the thick of the global financial crisis, Malam Sanusi proved his mettle by identifying the cause and effects of the crisis accentuated by reduced capital inflows into the Nigerian economy. Major failures in corporate governance in Nigerian banks, lack of investor and consumer sophistication, inadequate disclosure and transparency about financial position of banks, critical gaps in the regulatory framework and weaknesses in the business environment, among others. As part of measures to mitigate the effects of the global financial crisis on the Nigerian economy, the Central Bank of Nigeria, under the leadership of Malam Sanusi Lamido Sanusi, rolled out strategies to bail out distressed banks, unlock credit markets, and inject funds into the productive sectors. There were also interventions initiated by the CBN in the power and aviation sectors. The Aviation Intervention Fund has produced remarkable results as can be seen in the remodeling of major international airports across Nigeria. At the commissioning of the remodeled and upgraded Amino Kano International Airport recently in Kano, which the CBN governor had the rare honor of performing, history was reenacted. It is on record that Malam Sanusi's grandfather, Emir Sanusi, commissioned the first international airport in Kano, which happened to be the first contact point for any air traveller coming into Nigeria. Anyone who's from Kano and anyone who's gone through this airport in the last few years will be amazed at the transformation. But it's not just Kano, and many people have asked me how come the central bank seems to be always constantly supporting aviation. The reason is that the central bank supports public officers that are doing something. And the, the advantage with doing something is that people can like you or not like you, they may agree with you or not agree with you. They cannot take away from you what you have achieved. There is no one that will go to Kano Airport or Kaduna Airport or Enugu Airport or Port Harcourt Airport or Lagos Airport and claim that things are not happening. And, and frankly, that is all that we need from public officers. Build the roads, build the airports, build the bridges, build the infrastructure, build the schools and let the population, or that's what we should do, and let the population take over. And if each and every one of us who has been given a certain responsibility for one small part of Nigeria 
decides that he's going to approach or he or she will approach that responsibility with the level of commitment and diligence that we have seen, say, in the aviation sector, this country would have moved far, far beyond where it is today. So my first um, advice to myself and to my colleagues in the public sector, whether it's power or petroleum or works or Niger Delta or agriculture or education or health, is let us all try in our areas to achieve so that these achievements are self-evident. We don't have to convince anyone that we work in. Now the second thing is something that's missing in this conversation that I think we've not noticed. Stella has spoken about a cargo airport for perishables and for agriculture. Now for me as an economist and as governor of Central Bank, that is the most important and visionary step that Aviation Minister has taken. You see, airports are not just to carry human beings from Lagos to Kano, and that's it. They're not just there to make travel easy and comfortable, make it a comfortable experience for individuals. Kano is an agricultural state. It used to contribute 60% of the total revenues of the northern region from agriculture and industry. The only way agriculture is going to come back is for farmers to be linked to markets. Now, I'll give you a simple example. I just have had the benefit of looking through some tomato um, survey, feasibility study. And I was talking to the consultant, and he said to me, do you know that tomato costs more in Lagos and Port Harcourt than in London? In other words, if, if a farmer can produce tomato in Kadawa and put it on a plane every morning in Kano to get to Lagos or Port Harcourt, he would earn more than he would get if he sold it to a supermarket in the UK. And, and this is really a great opportunity for opening up an entire population and linking them up to markets. So the idea of the agricultural airport, an airport, an airport for perishables, an airport for dry crops, is an idea that recognizes that airports are part of the economic development of a region. And that is something that I'd like to congratulate the minister for having that vision for. It's something that I'm sure the people of Kano would welcome and would like to see um, be actualized as quickly as possible. Now we're also pleased to hear that you're going to build, or you've awarded the contract for the new international airport. Now for those who may believe that the Ministry of Aviation does not want international airlines to come to Kano. The question is, if the ministry didn't want airlines to come to Kano, why would they be building an international terminal? So building an international terminal we take as evidence of a commitment to encourage the airlines to come. Uh, you've approved Emirates and Turkish. Um, we'll continue uh, to work with you and we're sure that you will continue to encourage other airlines to come back. Uh, this was the terminal that had KLM, it had uh, British Airways, in fact it had BOAC a long time ago and British Caledonian and all the airlines. And as the airlines come back, as agriculture recovers, as the economy recovers, we hope to see more and more international airlines uh, come to the city. So Stella, as your colleague um, in the federal government, as your friend, uh, as a citizen of Kano uh, and um, a member or a descendant of the man who commissioned the first airport. And by the way, um, just one more piece of history. My great-grandfather commissioned this airport. My grandfather commissioned the International Terminal. And uh, therefore, uh, I'm pleased to be commissioning this as well.
as a worthy prince of the Kano Emirate, Malam Sanusi Lamido Sanusi Dang Majang Kano has received widespread acknowledgement of his heritage and honor for his immense contributions to national development. <laughs> For any close observer, it is quite clear that Malam Sanusi's passions include commitment to world-class banking standards, quest for justice, probity and accountability, philanthropy and insightful intervention in public discourse. The CBN governor's unflinching commitment to probity and accountability has earned him many awards and honors, which include the Forbes Africa Magazine's Africa Person of the Year 2011, named among Time Magazine's 100 Most Influential Persons of the World, the Tribune, Leadership and the Nation newspapers, as well as Silver Bed Promotions, also named him Man of the Year in 2009, 2010 and 2011. Sanusi also received the National Honor of Commander of the Order of the Niger, CON, in 2010. Malam Sanusi's far-reaching reforms at the CBN and his unrelenting quest to stabilize the Nigerian economy also brought him another honor. This time, it was the National Assembly that decided to honor the consummate economist and icon of integrity. There is no doubt that the revolutionary efforts of Malam Sanusi Lamido Sanusi at repositioning the CBN and sanitizing the Nigerian economy have paid off. From his excellent handling of the turmoil in the Nigerian banking industry in 2009, evident in the swift and decisive application of CBN's powers to prevent the collapse of some banks, thus safeguarding depositors' money up to the 100% remittance of internally generated revenue, IGR, to the Federation account, Malam Sanusi has distinguished himself as a true patriot. Let me quickly say, this is the first time in the history of the parliament that the agencies are being invited specially for the purpose of commending them. This is not only to the credit of the Committee of Finance. This is to the credit of the Speaker of the House of Representatives and leadership of this house for one singular reason. We believe that when we see what is wrong in the country, we open our mouth and talk. And this time around Nigerians, we all agree with us that wherever we see something that is positive, we do not shy away from coming out to say, something good has been done. For these few agencies that choose to do the right thing, I've said it to some of the agencies that came here, that probably the central bank have some of the smoothest speakers in the world, and they would have been able to convince everybody in the country why the huge billions of errors that they have taken are remitted to the Consolidated Revenue Fund Why they would have used it for their own internal expenditure. They need that money. They do. Honorable colleagues, distinguished ladies and gentlemen of the press, I welcome you all to this special event in the calendar of the Finance Committee to give recognition and honor to whom it is due. It is a commendation for, for compliance to deserving public institutions. Questions may arise as to the appropriate propriety of both the oversight function of the National Assembly and indeed of this commendation ceremony. The National Assembly is both the law-making arm of government and the primary watchdog of the people, elected by the people and is supremely enabled by the Constitution. 
The oversight function in all democracies is basically aimed at preventing fraud, wasteful spending, compliance with the law, and to generally ensure that governments and public institutions live and operate truly to the mandate entrusted to them by the people. This committee has decided to commend these institutions for compliance because it is proper to separate the compliant from the non-compliant. More so, we know that public institutions are managed by human beings and we believe that to change human behavior for the better, three things can be done. One is to employ sanctions. The other is to give reward or commend desired behavior. Yet, the third option is a combination of the two. We have chosen to recognize compliant institutions based on our strong conviction that the time has come for public officers to imbibe self-compliance when obedience to law and the delivery of common good are concerned. It is on this note that we commend the Central Bank of Nigeria for being the first among the institutions qualified to receive this commendation today for exemplary commitment to its statutory remittance having promptly and consistently paid into federal government coffers in dues. The CBN have consistently been the largest contributor to the Consolidated Revenue Fund by way of IGR. <laughs> the CBN is not a revenue generating agency. It wasn't set up to make profit. The CBN is a regulator. But for the period under review, they have remitted 186.9 billion. <laughs> to the Consolidated Revenue Fund. A um, few weeks ago, they came here. We had a standing pledge that they would do an additional 30 billion within the, within the new, within the within the next few weeks. Sorry, I'm probably too excited. I love when I announce this in the big videos. Please pay. You know, I boast a lot with the CBN when it comes to, when it comes to IGR. <laughs> I boast, and I'm serious about that. I boast a lot with them. People say, why do you do that? I said, look, I'm doing the right thing. So I mention them everywhere because we want people to, they've paid the 30 billion already. The committee have decided to commend the CBN for their commitment to revenue drive of government with regard to the IGR. We pray that they continue to keep it up. Now my hand is not too big, but with the full backing of the entire finance committee and the leadership of the house, will invite each one of the head of these agencies for a cool handshake. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Doctor, I think you do understand uh, the importance of the financial activity. And uh, the whole of us here are members of this committee. And I think one of the biggest messages that we should all take home here today is that uh, the house never operates with a squint eye, one side eye. We operate with two eyes. And when we see the good in someone, we identify it. And where there is a limitation, tomorrow if you are invited to this house again, on some other issues that is not to praise you, I hope you will not complain. To <laughs> On this, Mr. Governor, from the depth of our heart, we feel so proud of you. People like you make our job very easy. People like you make it easy for a proper appropriation process. We commend you. We encourage you to continue this way. I remember during the MTEP we had all exchanges. But when it comes to the issue of giving out money that is even a more difficult responsibility, we didn't have to flog the governor of Central Bank. He is always paying.
think the country should take note of that. Everybody should commend him for doing that. The Central Bank is not only the Central Bank is not only is not only complying, but the Central Bank is the highest donor to the consultant. gentlemen of the press, that was the core marshal and not the government of the Central Bank that spoke about public lynching. <laughs> because, because, you know, because I don't know what the next headline will be. I have never come to public lynching at the National Assembly. Um, I've been invited to this um, National Assembly so many times. Uh, this is, I think, my most pleasant um, <laughs> visit. Um, and it is strange that, that on the day I was being invited to be praised. Um, there was no letter of invitation. Because <laughs> I was just invited verbally. Um, Mr. Chairman, I would kindly request that I get a letter retroactive inviting me for a handshake. <laughs> so that, so that when, when I write my memoirs, that it shall be on record that at least on one occasion, <laughs> I, was called to, I was called to be praised on this one occasion uh, uh, as a committee of finance. But on a serious note, Mr. Chairman, um, just like the core marshal um, and the FSRC, the central bank has always had a tradition of making its remittances. In fact, um, long before the Fiscal Responsibility Act, um, if you go back to the records, in 2000, the central bank remitted 42.7 billion. And uh, 2001 was 52.7. So um, there has been a history of that. In the last four years, we've remitted 217 billion. Uh, and, but that's because this year we made a profit of 100 billion. And as rightly pointed out by the chairman, the central bank is not a profit center. Uh, there are some years where the central bank will make losses. And the irony of central banking is we make a lot of money when the economy is facing difficulty. Um, it's strange because um, that is when the banks come to us to borrow money and we charge them interest. Um, that is when um, maybe the exchange rate is under pressure and we take profit. Um, on the dollars that we hold. So, as we fix the problems of the economy, we end up making less money. Um, so, uh, we thank you for recognizing that. And we do hope that as we look at uh, the central bank from this side of the table, uh, we will begin to invite the central bank more on what our core mandate is. You gave us a job in the CBN Act. You told us to manage inflation, to manage the exchange rate to manage the banking system and manage reserves. So Chairman, as of January this year, we have brought inflation down to 9% from 16% in 2009. In February, it was 9.5, and we expect to go back below 9% in March. As of today, the reserves of the Federation stand at 49.3 billion, up from about 30 billion in 2009. Uh, the foreign exchange market has been stable for the last two three years and the banking system has been fixed. The IMF has just finished an EFSA uh, where they've basically said that the banks have been fixed. So in terms of the core mandate of the central bank, um, my colleagues and I, and when I say my colleagues and I, I don't mean the ones you see here. Um, the central bank is the product of work by 6,000 wonderful people. Many of them you don't see. Uh, they work day and night. Um, as you can see when you look at our accounts, we increased their salaries significantly in 2009, and they rewarded us by reducing overheads, and the reductions more than compensated for the increase in salaries. Um, everything the Central Bank has achieved has been the work of those people, and I'm proud to take the credit uh, for their work, which is why I'm also always happy 
to come for the public lynchings, not in the National Assembly but in the press. Um, I'd like to thank you very much uh, for this. And uh, we have had an excellent relationship, I must say, with our committees. Um, and we'll continue to improve on that relationship, continue to work um, on the relationship with the National Assembly. And again, um, I won't make a long speech because I've made a lot of money. So I just um, thank you uh, very much uh, for this. And on behalf of my colleagues, uh, look forward to the next invitation, uh, uh, which, and hopefully the next and the one after will be invitations that I will not have any cause to complain about, and you will not have any cause uh, to complain about the channel. But thank you very much. Malam Sanusi Lamido Sanusi had his early education at the St. Anne Catholic Primary School, Kaduna, and the prestigious King's College, Lagos. He graduated from the equally prestigious Akmadu Bello University, Zaria, with a Bachelor of Science, B.Sc. Economics degree, and Bachelor of Arts, B.A. First Class Honors in Sharia and Islamic Studies from the University of Africa, Khartoum, Sudan. Earlier in his banking career, Malam Sanusi had served as Chief Risk Officer of the United Bank for Africa, UBA, and the First Bank. Without any doubt, this brilliant scholar, activist, eloquent defender of the voiceless, philanthropist, foremost risk expert, Prince of the Kano Emirate and potential Emir, has forever changed the character of banking and bankers in Nigeria. Thank <laughs> you.